In the architecture of sleep, REM or rapid eye movement sleep stands out as a paradoxical state. You're dreaming, but the body lies in a protective paralysis, so you don't act out your dreams. It's during REM that the body's growth hormone, important for anti-aging, and testosterone, pivotal for both men and women, are released. Paradoxically, it's a time when our heart rate and blood pressure can climb and our brain activity surges. Electrically, we look awake. The brain is actively working out our emotional issues, a sort of nocturnal therapy session, low REM, and we're left irritable and prone to emotional upheaval. Most surprising is the stark equation that lower REM correlates with an increase in mortality. A mere 5% dip in REM, risk of death increases 13%. REM is not just a place to dream, but can be a cornerstone of our very survival. In deep sleep, you demonstrate ultra-slow brain waves, never seen in the waking state. Deep sleep occurs early in the night, more in the first three hours. Deep sleep is essential for physical recovery. As we age, we get less of it, so we need to guard it. If you miss out on deep sleep, the repercussions can be physical, feeling tired or with malaise, but it also undermines your health, leading to alterations in your blood pressure and heart rate, and can lead to problems with your insulin, as seen in prediabetes. Because of this, deep sleep is called your natural blood pressure medicine. If you go to bed late and sleep late to make it up, you will catch up on REM, but you will have missed your deep sleep. Most surprising, caffeine, especially later in the day, can decrease your deep sleep by up to 30%. This is like getting the sleep of someone 10 to 15 years older than you. Many turn to alcohol to help them fall asleep, to turn off an active planning mind. But alcohol is a false friend, since even moderate amounts can affect your sleep quality with frequent waking and an increase in your stress response. Even a glass of wine or two at dinner? Sadly, even a single glass of wine will have an effect, especially on REM. REM sleep is when growth hormone and testosterone are released. You can get a 50% drop in growth hormone, essential for tissue repair and anti-aging and a decrease in testosterone, which can lead to an increase in the risk of prostate cancer in men. REM is when you process your emotions, your nightly therapy session, so you can end up emotionally more fragile. Worst of all, over time, REM is the biggest predictor of mortality. The less REM, the more likely you are to die. So balance risk. Good sleep gives an astronomical return on investment. Most surprising, the number one question Huberman asks new patients is how do they sleep? Marijuana has two active components, THC and CBD. THC is a psychoactive part that makes you high and seems to help you fall asleep faster. Unfortunately, THC blocks REM sleep, just like alcohol. Also, when users stop using, they have crazy dreams as the brain tries to catch up on REM sleep. A huge problem is that users need more and more to achieve an effect, and upon withdrawal, there can be intense insomnia and anxiety, too. CBD is much less psychoactive, and CBD is not detrimental to sleep architecture like THC. Unfortunately, we need to be careful about dosage, since a a low dose can lead to wakefulness. If CBD is found to work for sleep, Walker thinks it's most likely because it lowers your temperature, lowers your anxiety, or it causes the adenosine buildup in the brain, which causes sleepiness, to be heavier or felt more. Most surprising, Huberman gave CBD to his bulldog and it had the opposite effect, keeping the dog awake. So be careful out there. Melatonin occurs naturally in our bodies, kicking in at dusk as light dims and peaks around the time of sleep. Melatonin is our internal clock telling us when it's time to sleep and wake up. Melatonin doesn't keep you asleep, it only triggers falling asleep. A scientific meta-analysis says melatonin actually doesn't work for younger people. It may help in people older than 60 because naturally occurring melatonin drops with age due to pineal gland deterioration. Dosages commonly available are from 1 to 20 milligrams. These dosages are too high. Our physiological levels are between 0.1 and 0.3 milligrams. What happens if dosages are too high? In one study, they injected male hand hamsters with large doses of melatonin and their testes dramatically shrunk from almond size to the size of a grain of rice. What an image! Male hormones plummeted. Hence, when it comes to melatonin, Huberman won't touch it. Our surprising fact for this video.
Walker and Huberman discuss two more supplements, kiwi and apigenin. Walker says there is one human published study on kiwi fruit. Kiwi decreased the time to fall asleep. Subjects fell asleep faster, stayed asleep longer through the night. There is also one animal study. Mice fell asleep faster and increased sleep duration also. That experiment, they determined that kiwi probably worked via the GABA system. So this is more convincing, not only since it's a study with animals with less placebo and bias, but also gives an understanding of how it might work. Apigenin is a compound that comes from chamomile, and Huberman likes this. He subjectively feels he sleeps better with it. Walker says the data is subjective, not objective, but just because we don't have data yet doesn't mean that there isn't something to it, and it's good to remain open to future studies. Surprising fact, eating kiwi fruit may help you sleep, but you need to eat the skin. Some suggestion for sleep sound good, but are they? Huberman and Walker discuss supplementation with valerian root and tart cherries for sleep. Lots of people swear by valerian root, and even the name sounds like Valium, right? Walker says there have been seven studies. Five showed no effect. Two didn't even have enough data. One looked at over 25 sleep qualities, and not even one of them was affected. So, as popular as valerian is... Probably not worth the money. Tart cherries, an actual fruit, has been touted to help sleep. Walker was extremely skeptical about this, but he found three very well done placebo controlled studies done by credible researchers. In one study, tart cherries reduced time awake by an hour, in a second, increased the amount of sleep by 34 minutes, and in another, 84 minutes, and incredibly, also decreased napping. So, surprising fact, crazily tart cherry juice may very well be the better choice than valerian to help you sleep. By a lot. Andrew Huberman and Matthew Walker, sleep expert, took a look at supplements and start with magnesium. Is it right for you? What does the science say? Should you take magnesium for sleep? Huberman says that magnesium helps him sleep and that magnesium biglycinate or magnesium 3 and 8 make better sense because they can cross the blood-brain barrier into the brain. Magnesium citrate, the magnesium we know as the laxative to help constipation, does not get into the brain. Walker says the notion that magnesium might help with sleep came from the fact that those with magnesium deficiency have insomnia as a side effect. And when you supplement them with magnesium, the insomnia gets better. For the rest of us, there is no evidence. So surprising fact, even though magnesium seems to help Huberman fall asleep, there is zero convincing data for magnesium supplementation for sleep. So save your money. Huberman loves napping. Walker doesn't nap, even though he feels a dip in energy after lunch. Research is clear that napping leads to better heart health, cortisol regulation, learning, memory, emotional well-being. Wow! The ideal duration is 20 minutes up to 90 minutes. NASA studies have shown that even brief naps of 17 to 26 minutes are effective. For those with insomnia, there are downside to naps. They can interfere with nightly sleep by reducing adenosine, which is what causes the pressure to sleep. Napping is like releasing the pressure in a pressure cooker, so at night... You don't feel that need for sleep. If you're a napper, limit naps to early afternoon and keep them short, less than 35 minutes. There are fervent nappers like scientist Lee Ching Lo who will grab an empty office to get his nap when traveling for conferences. Surprising fact, Walker believes in eradicating the guilt around the need for sleep. He thinks it should be seen as a fundamental human and civil right. And who can argue with the benefits? What do Huberman and Walker think about tryptophan and serotonin supplements for sleep? Huberman says he's tried tryptophan, precursor for serotonin for sleep, but he had intense dreams and then insomnia for days afterwards. Walker says that can be tricky because we need serotonin to be modulated in very specific ways. Naturally, during REM sleep, both serotonin and norepinephrine are shut off. They need to be shut off for REM sleep to occur. This is the only time in your 24-hour cycle that they are absent. Acetylcholine increases during REM sleep, so there's a push-pull between these neurotransmitters. So it's very hard to manipulate them correctly. So basically, if you supplement with serotonin, you may destroy your REM sleep, resulting in some of the bad consequences that come from poor REM sleep. Bad mood and shorter life. Surprising fact, Huberman insists he'll never take tryptophan or serotonin again unless medically necessary. 
sleep significantly influences reproductive hormones. Inadequate sleep can decrease testosterone, estrogen, and follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, leading to menstrual cycle disruptions in women and reduced sexual interest. Sexual activity, including orgasm and masturbation, can positively impact sleep by releasing naturally occurring sedatives, like oxytocin. Sleep quality is interconnected with lifestyle factors such as diet, exercise, and relationships, so these act Activities affect sleep and are affected by sleep. Sexual activity boosts testosterone levels in both partners, promoting better sleep quality. Sleep disruption can lead to relationship conflicts by lowering empathy, however. Huberman did not shy away from this important topic, emphasizing that we all came from the uniting of sperm and egg. Most surprising, each additional hour of sleep in women can increase sexual desire by 14%. Can you get too much sleep? Huberman and Walker discuss the concept of excessive sleep or hypersomnia. It can in indicate a high sleep need or perhaps daytime sleepiness. Both of these are observed in depression where individuals spend more time in bed but aren't necessarily sleeping. Turns out sleeping 10 to 11 hours can increase mortality risks. This could be due to a hidden underlying illness where the body is relying on mother nature's sleep therapy to cure it, it ultimately fails. Individuals sleeping 10 to 11 hours might be experiencing poor sleep quality at night, meaning they're actually awake a fair portion of the 10 to 11 hours. The concept of too much sleep aligns with the harm of too much of many essentials like water, oxygen, and food. All co cause mortality are lowest within the optimal sleep range of seven to nine hours, but rise again with longer sleep durations. Surprising fact, not enough and too much sleep can both hurt your health. Walker has some unconventional sleep tips alongside the standard advice of keeping the room cool, avoiding light before bed, and using cognitive behavioral therapy. For example, after a poor night's sleep, he recommends not trying to compensate with sleeping in or naps or extra caffeine or going to bed earlier. You'll get back on track faster by staying with your schedule. He also recommends establishing a wind down routine in the evening, avoiding screens, adding in stretching, meditation, reading, or warm baths, mimicking bedtime rituals that we use for children. He likens sleep to landing a plane. It has to be gradual, deliberate process. If you have intrusive thoughts, a beneficial strategy is writing down worries in a worry journal to mitigate nighttime anxiety and improve sleep onset. Removing visible clocks from the bedroom can also help by reducing the stress of clock watching. Surprising fact, counting sheep, the tried and true, widely known technique is ineffective.